information process displaying. So we are going to take a look at what is seen as the final information process, which is displaying. Okay, so we'll define what displaying is. And essentially, it's the output of the information, okay, the displaying of the information presented in a format that is specific to a user's needs. Okay, so obviously the data has now been processed, it's been put together into what the user wants, and now the user gets to experience what that is. And I say experience being careful because it's not always see, okay, what it is. Because sometimes it might be displayed in the format of audio, or it might be printed off onto paper. Okay, so it's coming in a way that the user specifically wants, and it's got to match the data type they want to see. So that's why it's specific to their needs. So we'll have a look at some of the methods for displaying data. The first and most obvious one is screens. You are looking right now at my information, okay, which is just being displayed to you through some sort of monitor, whether it be on your phone, on your tablet, or on your PC desktop monitor. Okay, so screens display data, okay, and usually it's visual data, okay, that they are seeing. But also, as mentioned, it can be in the form of audio, and then audio is displayed through sound systems, your speakers, okay? So understand, we're not just talking about visual things for display, but also things we might hear, anything that uh, affects one of the senses. Okay, we have paper-based printouts, which is still common and used these days, which are obviously done by printers, okay? So the data is printed off that you can read independent of a system, and that's still the advantage of paper. You don't need a system to read it, okay? You can just look at it while you're sitting in bed. Okay, we have presentations, okay, which are put together to display uh, a piece of information to an audience, okay. We have headsets, which is what I'm wearing right now, okay, but I'm actually inputting into this for collecting, okay, but if you're wearing a headset right now listening to me, you're using your headset, specifically the speakers on your headset that are around your ears for the displaying of the audio of my voice. And then finally, we have virtual and augmented reality, okay? And we've talked about virtual reality for years, creating simulated environments. But the big one here is actually augmented reality because this is the way we're going. It's just gotten bigger and bigger. You know, it all started out with that craze with Pokemon Go, but we're actually getting real practical uses for augmented reality now. We're looking at systems that allow plumbers to, you know, wear glasses and look at a wall and it will show where the pipes are in the wall. Or electricians to do the same thing, but see the electrical circuits that are within a wall, but before they start drilling in and changing things, okay? So augmented reality is really gonna start going into a whole variety of different interests there, which is extremely exciting. So we'll take a look at information technology now, which is used for um, displaying. So firstly is the hardware. So as mentioned, we've got monitors. And um, what we used to have, and if your parents have an old TV, it was most likely a CRT TV, okay? A cathode ray tubing TV, where it had that big back behind it where the tubing was, okay? And projected the image onto the screen. But these days, the standards are LCD, liquid crystal display, okay? And plasma screen TVs, which display text, image, and video. Next, we have our digital projectors, okay? And um, I show my classes this information through digital projectors. It's mounted on the roof, okay? And it projects a larger image that's capable more so than an actual monitor onto a screen for audiences to view. Digital projectors are also used at the cinema when you go and watch a movie, okay? And it allows for bigger viewing of visual data, okay? Pro mainly showing text, image, and video once again, but on a larger scale and usually to an audience. We then have printers and plotters for printing off paper. Okay, the printers, as mentioned, we can print off data. We have access to many printers, usually A4, or A3 size, but uh, plotters are often used by architects and draftsmen for printing off larger scale blueprints for house designs or engineering diagrams for buildings. Okay, so they allow for larger paper printouts to come out and to be very accurate and to scale. We then also have, as we mentioned, speakers for our audio. So speakers can be attached to a headset, they can be an independent speaker, they could be the speaker that's attached to your system, or they could be a surround sound system that is actually um, smartly done where different sounds come out of different speakers in order to give a user specific experience, whether it be a movie or in a video game. Moving on to software now, and a lot of this software um, enhances what the hardware is doing, okay, or makes possible what the hardware is doing. So firstly is presentation software. We've mentioned that we can create presentations for delivering information. Well, that's done through presentation software such as Microsoft PowerPoint or Keynote or Google Slides, which allow multimedia to be presented. So pretty much all the data types can be shown through presentation software. This was created, this video, using presentation software. 
Next, we have web browsers that allow for the internet's data to be presented to the user to view it. Once again, the internet shows all the data types, text, image, audio, video, animation. So it is also classified multimedia and it shows them all combined together. Okay, and that is how we view this information, which you're watching right now, a video that is stored on another server, but it is being presented to you through a web browser, okay? If you're watching me on a mobile device, you might be watching me on the YouTube app, okay? Which still can be viewed through a web browser. Okay, and then finally we have authoring software, which allows us to both create, which is on the collecting end, but then as you're creating, you're seeing the work in progress that you are creating. Okay, so you are getting it displayed back to you, okay, as it's being created. Okay, so these are things such as your um, Adobe Dreamweaver for creating a website, or right now I use iMovie for developing my videos, the video authoring software. So once again, why we're classifying as multimedia there. So I hope this has helped you understand the final information process of displaying. And really it's all about giving the information back to the user, okay? So they can get okay, the end result of the information system. They're getting the feedback and in a format that is specific to their needs, okay, and thus being valuable. So enhancing the information once again. So I hope you've enjoyed not just this video, but all these videos on the information processes in helping your understanding of not just them, but an introduction to this course.